Hey everyone, uh, thanks for coming uh, to our first workshop. I'm ZD from Full Combo and the Portland team as a smart contract engineer. I'm super excited to introduce you to Portaling today. It is an uh, amazing platform that uh, totally changing the way we develop the apps. So first, uh, Portaling. Uh, thinking of uh, is as you will go to SDK and ser API service for linking different protocols. It is super innovative and really removes smart contract development while reducing uh, conflict risks. Sounds great, right? So let's uh, rewind a bit. Uh, our journey began with Full Combo, a tool that simplified DeFi strategies through combo transactions. Building on this concept, Postlink was uh, developed to provide a more comprehensive solution, enabling three parties build your idea and craft complex protocols combination. Uh, use cases more easily. So, Polling offer user friendly API and SDK, a big step up from the regular smart contract development. Uh, it, it is very, very feasible. So, the thing is, developers often need to write a smart contract to combine different protocols, but as we know, this is very risky and costly especially if those smart contracts can be upgraded, can be modified by a developer. So with Portal Link, you can do more cool stuff like leverage kind of swap on landing protocols or automation for your EOA wallet or small wallet or uh, apps to make your DApp more user-friendly. So all things involving swap, landing, fresh loans and more, but hopefully, of them without to uh, usual smart contract risk development and uh, for all the this very costly. So I think this is all about making the app development more efficient, creative, and flexible without a compromise uh, uh, on security. Yeah. So take, let's take a closer look at how porting the SDK works. And I think it's the most flexible SDK out there for developers, making things simpler. With porting SDK, you can automatically handle token approval, fee sharing, and even uh, predict outcomes for transaction. And here's how it works in three e steps. So the first is to build logics. Uh, we can uh, think of uh, unique uh, use cases. Let's say this is a simple lab sample. So it's combining uh, Uniswap with Aave to zap your DC to Aave.BTC to earn some juicy APY. And the next step is the STK helps you predict things like initial funds, uh, so how many tokens will transfer from out from your wallet, user's wallet, and uh, the estimated final balances in your in user's wallet, and uh, estimating how much fees uh, the user should pay, and uh, what approvals you need to ask your user to sign it before you send out the transaction. And the, the third step is just generate the transaction. So after you get all necessary details, you can create the transaction, including two value and the data, and the level uh, your DApp can ask you, your user to sign it. So I think this process uh, simplifies the DApp development and giving developer more freedom to build on top of those DeFi protocols without the technical hassle such as smart contract development. So Polling is the most popular, popular trends and the protocols, and it's helping you expanding your ideas. And here's the best part is, even we add more and more chains and protocols, the Polling contracts do not upgrade or do anything. So this means that the newest integration or happen in, uh, in our repo is written in the TypeScript. So, what we believe is uh, this approach will significantly uh, reduce the 
counter risk for developer, developer's risk and also for the user risk. So it ensures a smoother and a more secure for developers. Okay, let's check out the documentation. Uh, this document provides an overview of Polylink, stored in your DApp, and uh, its unique features, security measures, and also the fee structures. So I think it helps you to understand how to use Polylink effectively in your DApp. So here's how Polylink streamlines the development process. Uh, so take an example. A user interacts with your DApp UI, and uh, the UI will request uh, to port in API by the request. As I just mentioned, of new chain and the new portal integration happen in the portal link logic SDK. So the logic could be anything from approval to swap to supply to borrow to fashion and and so on. And after that, the Prolink API will respond with the transaction data, which the user can sign it and send the transaction. And finally, the Prolink route country will execute the transaction. Uh, so uh, it executes the predefined logic step in sequence, ensure a uh, a smooth transaction process without to a uh, developer like you to write any smart contract. Okay, so let's dive into the uh, integrating public SDK and API into your project, into your DApps. Our type of script SDK is the tool of the choice, streamlining the way your application communicating with API and the smart contracts. And also you can use, uh, use our uh, RESTful API if you do need more control. Okay, let's uh, uh, quickly cover some sections. First, Whitepool link. Uh, it simplifies develop, developer experiences and uh, integrate uh, new software permit too. And the second, uh, as we believe the security is key, right? So that our country are immutable to prevent any unwanted changes from our side. And the third one is the product is open to integrate more protocols such as DeFi or even a project is working. All right. So uh, let's talk about fees on portal link. Uh, we keep it very, very straightforward for developers uh, to earn some fees from your product. And uh, I think the coolest part is developer who build with political data a uh, fair uh, 50 to 50 ratio uh, fee sharing. And the fees will go right back to developer wallet in real time, uh, no hassle, no, no wait. Just uh, let developer build, launch, and earn. Uh, for example, if you build a product or wallet, uh, that gives users the best experience. I think they won't mind a tiny of the cost, right? And the, the product uh, SDK can really, really help you to generate general re revenue from your projects. So without the risky or costly smart contract development. Now let's have a live demo of Polling API. I, well, we will showcase a real world scenario uh, swapping chokes on Uniswap and the supply them to Aave. Usually it's called that. Uh, I will guide you through each step from preparing Unix strategy uh, and uh, to view the launch and uh, send out the sensation. So here's uh, two simple logs. The first one is exchange token on Uniswap and the supply old token to other VC. So let's look at the Procling API Swagger. 
So here's five endpoints we have on the API. So the first one is list all available protocols and logs. The second one is for specific logs, uh, list the tokens uh, this dog has support. The third one is uh, get calculated quote for products. So for example, if you are using a swap token, you need to know how many of token it will uh, give uh, to the user. And uh, the next one is to estimate result along with the necessary approval data for signing. So it means that we, after we have uh, some logics, we can put those logics into the estimate API. And this API will sponsor uh, how many funds you need uh, and the, the, how the approvals you uh, need to uh, ask your user to sign in. And the final one is to put logics to the build API and it will respond to the uh, true and the data and the value for user sign. So let's try it out. The first endpoint is this old protocol support it, such as other v2 supply v3 fresh loan balancer fresh loan swapping and so on and for specific uh, logic such as v swap v3 and swap choke you can list all token the logic support another third api is called api so if you are uh, you want to do a swap on the Uniswap V3, this can be requested by the input uh, uh, strut and uh, out token out chart and uh, give this a CP. So for this demo, I would like to use a real person uh, wallet and simulate it on Tenderly. So uh, this wallet is uh, Vitalik's that is. So on Upstream, it has some uh, which UADC and some Ether. So for this demo, I would like to swap UADC to ETH and then pass those ETH to our V3. So here, uh, we need to search for the bridge UADC address and copy the bridge UADC address to the quote API's body here. And the token I'll uh, keep it as it uh, for uh, Ether. And the CP is set to uh, 1%. So it means that uh, we want to create a large content. It's containing the swapping from 1000 UDC to Ether. So let me call the code API. And it will respond the up token amount. Here, so it's the large body, so it gives the trade type it is as in, and the expected opt amount is 0 0.441 ether. Okay, so now we have the Uniswap B3 swap token large, so we can copy the large content into the next step estimate. In the estimate endpoint, uh, we can uh, first set the logic uh, here. So copy previous content into the field, field key. And as we using the Vitalik dice address, right? So let me copy the address here. here. And uh, there's a parameter code permit to type. It means that uh, what approaches you want to do the token authorization from the permit to to public. So since uh, I don't have a uh, Vitalik private key right, so I need to use approval. So this is a single transition to sign uh, on chip, uh, sign and send it on chain. Okay, uh, let me format it for better read. So in this estimate function, uh, we already have the first logic. Uh, this is a Uniswap V3 swap token from U with UDC to Ether. So let's prepare the second logic. This is our V3 logic, right? So let's go back to the uh, tokens endpoint. 
Are we busy? Surprise. So here, uh, here uh, is endpoint list all markets uh, available on RBC uh, Arbitrum. And uh, uh, as we want to supply Ether to the uh, RBC market, right, right? So let me search the RBC. Okay, here. Yeah. So this is the uh, Ethereum uh, Ether address. So let's copy it into quote API. So also modify it to RBC and the supply. And so here the input uh, token should be the uh, ETH, right? And the amount should be the previous output of the uh, swap token. And the token out should be the AETH, right? So AETH here this is a array content of two elements. This online is A token. And on our VC, there is no CPU parameter, so just this it. So here we can use uh, this body to do the quote for our VC supply. So the response will give us the explained result that is uh, output token, should, the amount should be same as the input amount, right? Because since our, way, our way token is one to one ratio. So let me copy the content. And oh, uh, let me uh, add one more logic. So copy a uh, use swap logic and uh, remove the field element. Change it to array vc supply. Then copy the previous uh, array vc quote response into the field element. And uh, let's execute. So uh, currently we have two large, first one is in swap, the second one is array supply, and uh, we use the SME endpoint. The response will be some, has some fields. The first one is funds, so it means that how many token will be spent from the Vitalik wallet address, wallet. And the balance is means um, how many token the Vitalik wallet will get. So this is uh, 0 0.44 uh, array ETH. And the fifth means that how many uh, net token the polling API requested. And as a developer like you guys, you can fill in a referral code into the final endpoint. So later you can get uh, the 50% 50, uh, 50, uh, 50 share of, of the fee. And the final one is the approvals. This means that uh, before we really send out the transaction, we need to ask the user to sign approval so so for the two approvals the first one is to approve a uh, UDC token from user wallet to permit to country and the second one is approve the token from permit to country to portal link so let's do this approvals first so internally I create a fork on Arbitron test Okay. And uh, let me simulation the first approval here to data. And uh, this is the same from the address, right? So let me copy the address. And the second approval should be from the permit to to uh, polling. So let me simulate the second approval. Also copy the address. Okay, so here we have two approvals from Vitalik Wallet. So finally, we can send out the depth transaction by the final endpoint code build. So let me copy the data into the build API. Okay, uh, let me format it. And before I really uh, execute, the 
and point I would like to add one more feature that since as we know uh, swap has CP right so in this CP is set to one percent so that is means that the RVC supply amount may be uh, higher or lower than the zero point four four right so to deal with this a uh, polling provide a very nice feature that's called balance link so we can set a balance BPS here and uh, it gives is 100 percent so it means that uh, the supply amount will use all of the EC on the portal link it means that the supply amount will send us the op token on chain so even though the opt amount may be 0 0.5 or 0 0.3 the supply function can use 100 percent of the ether from previous swap so it's very useful to avoid the failed transition over the dust, uh, the dust on the contract. So, uh, oh, sorry, they come here. Yeah. So here we have a uh, two data and a value. So finally, we can ask uh, Vitalik <laughs> to send out the transaction. So here two is supporting the router and uh, the value field is the fees, network fees from the Vitalik address. So, okay. Okay, uh, as we can see that supporting API can give you off data need to sign by the user and uh, uh, you can create any kind of uh, unique strategy to provide a better user experience for your DApp user. So here the Vitalik wallet finally send out the Zap transaction it is from the UDC token and swap it to the TH then the ETH pass it to RV and get a ETH and go back to the uh, okay, so the API gives you the uh, flexible to build any kind of logic, and finally, uh, you can use the API to get the real transaction, and the transaction data can really uh, be signed by user's wallet and send out to finish the, the use cases. From the porting API we just saw, it's clear that understanding the required parameter for each protocol labs can be very tricky. And that's where our JavaScript SDK comes in. So it simplifies the DApp integration and smoothly the uh, integration with API. And it also helps you craft any combination of protocols. So let me give you a sample code of the JavaScript code. And here is also the example of lab. So you swap E3 swap and RVC supply. So here we have uh, defined some token that we just saw in API. So it's a step one and two. Uh, These steps are used to build the swap logic. So the first step is also in the quote. So the uh, the SDK provide Uniswap V3 get swap token quotation and the field in the chain ID input chart and token out and the CP you want. So after the API response the swap quotation, just simply put the constant quotation to the next new swap token logic. So that's it. So you can get a swap logic compared to the previous uh, API demo. I think it's very, very simple. So also for the space three and the four, it's useful for uh, creating the supply logic. So the second idea is the supply quotation uh, input token among is from the previous swap quotation output, and uh, the target output token should be the A uh, WTC. And as we just mentioned that uh, because the CPG from the previous swap can be 
dynamic. So we use the balance linker to prevent swap slippage. So it will use 100% of the swap, swap of the token. So we just set a supply logic balance BPS as 100%. And uh, here we have the two logic swap and the supply. So just put logic uh, into an array and create a router data. Then we call the API estimate uh, function with logic data, and we can get uh, the fields we just saw in the previous demo, funds, balances, approvals, premium data. So here uh, we have one more premium data things. Uh, Currently, we are using the permit to permit function instead of approval. So here we can let the user to sign the permit data and get the permit seek. Then finally, we can put those permit data and seek into the raw data and uh, then go to the final step, put the new raw data with the permit data and seek into the view. SDK, then it will respond the true data value. Then we can uh, let a new user to sign the data and finish it in this case. So for uh, uh, API SD interface, you can find uh, all of a protocol with the pro provide a very comprehensive uh, uh, SDK document. So for example, our V3 there's a type for quotation and uh, there's some function to new the supply logic and there's is a uh, example call here. And some we also provide some useful utility functions such as version aggregator. So this uh, feature helps you find the most cost effective uh, fashion long source across different chains. For example, on Ethereum is uh, integrate zero fee uh, balance of fresh loan, radiant, Arbe, spark, and so on. Moreover, the uh, polling also provide a custom data feature. So it means uh, if uh, you, you want to integrate with some DeFi but it's not available on the current integration, so it means you can uh, call to any addresses with any data from the country and, and uh, the approval on country will be saved. So, uh, so it's definitely flexible to call to any country aligning to just the protocol current level. Okay, uh, thank you for joining our first workshop uh, with Polling. The DApp development uh, is more approachable and innovative than ever. So for further information and updates, visit polling.com and our social media, x.com and Discord. Yeah, happy coding. Thank you guys. Bye bye.